Bonjour mes amis et bienvenue en fin de dans le lune. Hello friends, if this is your first time, welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm pleased to meet you. If you've been here before, thank you for returning. I'm truly honored. Friends, if you are a returning visitor, you know that from my introduction that this is my series in which I use Terre de Marseille or Antique Italian decks to answer a short question that I draw from my larger Rider Waite Smith based spread during the week. So I did that. I just did a larger Rider Waite Smith based spread and reading from that spread. And from that spread, I pulled a question. And if you're interested in going to see that larger spread, I will put a card up here above me for you to click on and hop on over because I recommend it, actually. I would recommend taking the time to watch that longer video because it's the introduction to this one. And it's all about um, inner child, I won't say inner child work, but it's all about the inner child. Um, and it's a very deep, a very dense, a very important reading, I believe. The spread was very penetrating and very, the message was very dense. Let's put it that way. The message was very dense. And so instead of pulling a question of, well, how is that supposed to happen? Or how, what does this little piece mean? I wanted to get a, a broader, at, at, in one sense, a broader, but in another sense, a more concise answer to the general idea of the spread. Instead of pulling out a small piece, I'm asking the general question about the whole spread. And the whole spread, again, was about the inner child. And so, my question this week is, will our inner, what, I'm sorry, what will our inner child's perspective teach us about living the intentional life? Now, that whole spread was about the inner child and how important and powerful, perhaps, even the inner child is. And it would, the question for all of these spreads is about living an intentional life. So how does that inner child help us live intentionally? That was my question. Or to be more specific, what will our inner child's perspective teach us about living the intentional life? Why is that inner child so important for intentional livers? <laughs> wow, that's an odd word. Livers? I'm not talking about the part of the, the organ in the body, but those who live intentional lives. So, I've got a three-card spread all laid out. It's right here in front of me. Let me show you. You just saw the question all nicely written out for you, and then the three cards answering that question. And these cards are from my uh, Nicholas Conver redrawing by Artisan Terrell. It's a beautiful deck. The cardstock is amazing to shuffle. Um, the line work is very clear. It's not a restoration, it's a redrawing. Um, but very true to the original, I believe. And it's a, again, it's gorgeous. The cards are very easy to work with, and it came in a gorgeous box too. But unfortunately, I don't think that the rosewood box is available anymore, so I'm not even going to show it to you. Um, I've got other videos where I did show it to you if you want to go check that out. But uh, these cards are wonderful, and let's dive into the answer to what will our inner child's perspective teach us about living the intentional life, and with the especially when that first card came out, I laughed. We say LOL, laughed out loud, right? I laughed out loud because in the larger spread, if you haven't already gone to check out that larger reading, I recommend it. Um, in that larger reading, in answer to one of the questions was the Five of Wands. 
And in that card with the five wands, there were three little cherubim just shouting out, I'm your inner child, if you ask me. They, they're like these three little cherubs saying, I'm your inner child, and we're playing with these five sticks. So, when I ask the question, how will our inner child's perspective teach, what will our inner child's perspective teach us about living the intentional life? And the five of wands came out, I was, ah, okay, I got it. <laughs> you don't have to beat me over with the head with five sticks. Um, so, five of wands. And then right next to it, what do we get? We get the knight of wands, also from the larger spread. The knight of wands also appeared in the large spread. And then we have the magician or Le Batelier. So let's go, now I, when you saw the cards, right, the two human figures, the knight, the chevalier de baton, and Le Batelier, they were facing each other. And I, I won't go deeply into this in the reading, but I did notice, I don't know if you noticed this, but they both seem to be looking at the knight's stick. Yeah, the knight is holding up the stick to their to their left, but they're turned. Anyways, from our perspective, the knight is face over here, yeah, and the magician is over here looking at the stick. The knight is over here looking at the stick, and they both seem to be pretty impressed with that large stick. And the magician, the batelier, is also holding up a little stick of his own, right? But it's a little stick. Holding, so I've got my stick, i got my stick over here, it's my stick, but look at that stick over there. <laughs> That's kind of the impression I got. So like I said, I laughed a lot when these cards came out. Ooh, I like your the nice stick. <laughs> Come here often? Um, so... I'm sorry. Let's get back to the cards. Five of Wands. Let's start with that, and then we'll go to the Playful too. Five of Cards. The, the Five of Wands to me is a card of playfulness. It's a card of experimentation. Yeah? Taking stuff in the physical world and using our inspiration to play with it. Yeah? I mean, it's not doing the work. The coins would be the cards of doing work and tasks and that kind of thing. The wands are creative to me, are creative, passionate, inspired, inspired action, but playfully inspired, experimentally inspired. Like, let's do stuff with this, with these. Now let's do something interesting and exciting and fun. That kind of experimentation. It's creative risks, yeah? Because it's playful and experimental, we don't exactly know what the outcome is going to be. It's, so there is risk involved, but not the risk of, oh my God, you're going to die. You're, you're going to fall off a cliff and kill yourself. Not that kind of risk, but the risk of uns being unsure, going into the unknown, playing yourself into the unknown. Because the outcome is not known. It's unsure. So there is that kind of risk, the possible that it won't work out kind of risk. It's also the card of new desire. Yeah? It's that one new thing that bursts through the stability of the four. There are the four wands which are stable, routine, and then the fifth one bursts through in a new desire to explore something. Energy going beyond what has already been established, unknown. So again, going into the unknown. Like that song, into the unknown, into the unknown. Remember that song from Frozen 2? Yeah? Into the unknown. Um, also evolution. Now we got the one, the, the, the first, the germ, the, um, the seed of a passion, of an inspiration. Then the two, it divides and it grows a little bit, but it's not stable. It's not really secure. It's a two. There might be a little bit of tension, a little bit of conflict. 
it's just a little bit of a breaking apart, but it hasn't really created anything yet. Then the three bursts forth. It's the 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 for the seedling that bursts through the ground. The first two leaves burst through the ground. That's the three. Then we get into the four. The plant grows and it becomes stable. Okay, I'm I'm here. I'm a plant, and I'm going to be planted. I mean, I'm going to be be my plantedness. And it's not very active, dynamic, but there's a stability there. And then the five bursts forth again. It's the new shoot of growth. It's evolution towards something new, towards and also up, but also down. Yeah, you know? that that wand isn't bursting forth only up; it also bursts forth down. So, evolution toward unexpected depths as well as heights and larger dimensions, growing, and about to grow into perhaps the non-physical, into the spiritual, into the realm of beauty, and the mysterious. Breaking free, perhaps, ready to break free, burst free of the physical limitations into something more. And I think that's the first response, and the primary response to my question, what does our inner child's perspective teach us about living the intentional life? It's that five of wands. It's the playfulness, experimentation, the new desires, evolution towards unexpected depths and heights, going beyond what we have known, into the unknown, playfully moving into the unknown. Not, oh, I don't know what's out there, but what's out there? That inner child bursting forth out of the house into what's outside. And as that child bursts forth into the unknown, we become, we are the Knight of Wands, right? The Knight of Wands, Chabret de Baton, action, adventure, fearlessness, rushing out into the backyard and seeing a bug you've never seen before and going up to it, and what is that? rushing out into the rain and what is this stuff i love it it just feels like and playing stomping in puddles action adventure fearlessness colds be damned i'm gonna go out in the rain and play and as more adults there's also the sexual side of it yeah uh sexual and creative energy but exciting, creative, sexual, and creative energy. Making stuff and making connections with people. And that the, the, the connection of sexuality. Which can be fun, but can also be, again, evolution towards something deeper. Passion, deeper passion, higher passion. But the night again, okay, so I'm, I'm sorry, I keep going back to the five. The night, the Chevalier, has their big stick in their hand and passionate sexual connection too. At one with one's energy. And it's not something new, it's like, not like this, oh, where's this energy coming from? What do I do with it? But I've got it, I'm here, I'm one with it. This is me, I am my energy. We are one, we are united, I am energy. I can direct my instincts, to instincts towards something. I can direct my inspired action towards something, towards creating something. Creatively, courageously. And there's also a little bit of healing that I usually don't read into this card, but I know is a possible uh, meaning to this card. is healing abilities, ability to heal others, which is interesting because Part of the reading related to the inner child was healing as well. First, we heal the inner child so that the inner child can be our guide. And until we heal the inner child, it, the inner child doesn't make much of a guide. But once we do get a lot of that healing done, once we get the, our inner child's power revealed, then we can follow with the passion and instinct and inspiration. And so we've got our knight holding up their big stick <laughs> towards the magician, offering it to the magician, perhaps even. Look, you want to play with my... I'm oh, sorry. 
just went somewhere. You want to play with my stick? Um, um, so I told you this, this, this spread just it's got me going. So, okay, so we, you want to play with my stick? Let's go with it. So what does the magician say? Yeah, sure. Yeah, because the magician is a card of potential of manifestation and expressing themselves. It's the first expression of self in the trumps, in the majors, in whatever you want to call the 22 cards that are separate from the other suits. The triumphi. It's, this is a card of beginning and new studies for a lot of people. And perhaps not so much book learning as it is studies of the things and around us and the experiences we've had and the experiences we're having studying what is as it is because we have all of these tools and we have potential to do so much and we we recognize that the inner child recognizes that and the inner child recognizes we might want some guidance. We might be on a quest for wisdom as well. The inner child, as we play, as we explore, we also look to our parental figures, whether those parental figures are human or are spiritual or are our traditions or our, are our um, community or is the divine, whatever. We, can also recognize that we, as the inner child, as we explore and move into the unknown and we play, we also want a little bit of guidance, of wisdom, of, of understanding to reign forth upon us. And I love the interaction here between the, the Knight of Wands and the Magician. I love that. And maybe the magician does wish he had a bigger wand. Maybe the magician is a little bit of a size queen. I don't know. The wand, it's not the size of the wand, but the magic in the stick, right? Um, but we got this. Yeah, the magician has got this. The magician has everything that they need. And maybe sometimes we do get distracted by the wand in somebody else's hand that we wish we had different tools or maybe we do maybe sometimes our inner child does get distracted and wish that they had something that somebody else has but we can recognize that we don't need it we have everything that we need and that larger stick is ours already if that makes sense so what will our inner child's perspective teach us it will teach us to play, to explore, to move into the unknown, to own our fiery, passionate inspiration to move into life and also to heal ourselves and others and to experience, to manifest, to create and to learn, to experience, to gain wisdom from our experience and from others. What a what an intentional life that is. That is what an intentional life is, after all. It's moving with the powerful flow of intention and experiencing, receiving the experiences we placed out there, going into the unknown, finding new stuff, hidden treasures, growing, expanding, living with passion, living with, with inspiration. knowing that we have everything that we need and we'll get more and we can let stuff go we don't need to be clingy either right does this does this make sense to you as a response to that very simple question i hope it does it makes sense to me if it doesn't make sense let me know in the comments below and friends hit the like button if you're still with me um to show that you have are still with me and it helps the channel if you do hit the like button hit also subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed and hit the alarm bell so you get notifications of when i upload videos and i'll share this with anybody who you think might benefit from it 
people who you think might be interested in exploring more about Tarot de Marseille and might want to see a different person's perspective of reading cards. Um, and comment below. I really would love to hear from you. If you're interested in getting a reading yourself, there will be a link below. Hop on over to my Instagram account and send me a direct message and we'll get you a reading, either with Rider Waite Smith or maybe with Tarot de Marseille. I'm getting, I'm starting to feel more confident in reading for other people with uh, Tarot de Marseille or antique decks. And friends, now, as always, I wish you love, joy, well-being, and pure awareness. Thank you. Thank you.